Hi everybody, welcome to Sports Fire and Bailing Wire. Today we're going to break away from the Alice Chalmers restoration project and do a little side video and a tool review. As it pertains to what I'm going to be doing on my next video on the tractor restoration. So let's get into this and see what we got. What we're going to be reviewing today is going to be a micrometer set from 0 to 6 inches from any time tools. These are used in conjunction with a dial bore gauge indicator, which is what is in this case. These are also from Anytime Tools. You can read that. There's the other label in the case. Bore Gagu. So you can guess the country of manufacture for these. It doesn't say on them. But I can narrow it down to three a bit. A little spoiler alert for those of you that watch my videos. I bought these tools for this engine, which is going to be a stroker engine in my convertible. Some upcoming videos if weather ever gets nicer and that money tree that I planted ever starts sprouting some cash. This engine's a 318 poly. A lot of people call them the semi hemi. This was Chrysler's replacement for the hemi engine. It's still got the opposed valves like a hemi engine does and a semi hemispherical combustion chamber like a hemi. But it only use, utilizes one rocker shaft instead of two like the hemis did. It'll be a fun project in the future. Let's get back to what we're here for. Like I said, this micrometer set is from 0 to 6 inches. The only difference is the frames on them. The thimble, thimble and barrel and everything is 0 to 1 inch. Same on all of them, it's just a different frame. So you got the 0 to 1 inch, 1 to 2 inch, 2 to 3 inch, 3 to 4 inch, 4 to 5 inch, and 5 to 6 inch. And they turn nice and smooth. Zero out good. The ratchet feels good in it. I've checked them against all the, they come with standards for zeroing them out. If they're off a little bit, they come with these wrenches. You can lock the spindle, put the wrench on there and turn it to get it to exact zero if need be. These all seem to be pretty good. And there's a sta one inch standard included two, three, four, and five inch. You can calibrate each one of these tools. And they seem smooth. The ratchet feels good on them. I don't know if you can hear that. That's how you tighten it down. You never want to crank on this because these things are not C clamps like some people think they are. So you just turn it down on whatever part you're measuring with this. Click that a couple times and there's your measurement. Now these were like a hundred bucks, I think, compared to a set of Starrett's, which are around twelve hundred bucks. For comparison, I have a bit of Toyo here, which is another popular name and quite spendy. And the ratchet on this one feels like it has about the same tension as these do. And for a Toyo being an expensive brand, if you can read it. Made in Japan. The other thing we'll be looking at is this dial bore gauge set. And it will measure from 700 thousandths, which is a little under three quarters of an inch, up to six inches. You've got different adapters here to achieve what you need. The small handle is for the 700 to an inch and a half. This one's the 2 to 6. You got the 1.4 to 2 over there. I already have this one set up. I have the 4 inch anvil in it. Because I know the bore I'm going to be measuring for this video is supposed to be 4 inches. And then there's different shim washers in there. Since I know I'm going to be measuring a 4 inch bore, I put that shim washer in there to gain a little bit of range on the dial indicator. 
which I'll be showing you here in a second. But that's that set. Okay, since I know I'm going to be doing a 4 inch bore, I'm using the 4 to 5 inch caliper, or micrometer I should say. I hope this cheap camera can focus on this. I'm going to dial that in to zero and then lock it in place so I have an exact four inches here. Since this is a four-handed job, I'm going to let the vise be my third hand very lightly clamp that micrometer into the device. Now what I'm going to do with the 4 inch anvil and spacer in there I've got approximately 4 inches between the two. This is where the extra hand would be nice. You place this in here. gauge in the micrometer you adjust it around to get a zero it looks like I'm about a half a thousandths off here if I had a third hand I would use that to zero this out so I will adjust it just a little bit here off camera focusing but it's on zero now if I can hold it steady enough. Now what that does is when it's zeroed I'm just going to push it with my finger here. When it's at zero I'll know it's exactly a four inch bore. If the needle goes this way that means that the bore is oversized as in bigger than four inches. If the needle goes to the right of zero, in the clockwise direction, that is undersized. And these increments are in the thousandths of an inch. So let's test it out on a cylinder. Okay, we're in this four inch bore here. Right at the top of the bore, where there's no piston travel, and we're right on four inches. Now, when you're checking this, you want to check it at least 90 degrees to your original measurement. Check for out around. Some people even check them in three or four different places. Getting about a half a thousandths out around. Now we'll drop down below the ridge in this bore. Right there, my lowest reading is ten thousandths. So this cylinder is worn out by ten thousandths. So I'm four inches, ten thousandths bore. Which I have a manual ordered for this, but I don't have yet, so I don't know the exact specs. But I'm 
fairly certain 10 thousandths is going to be out of spec. So these cylinders are trash. Now I'll move down to the bottom. I really hope this is focusing. We're only about a thousandths over down there, which is good. I'll try it about midway up the cylinder. And it looks like we're about three there. Now the best way to do this is to have a notepad and write down for each cylinder where you're measuring top, middle, bottom, what your measurements are. And then, like I said, you want to check it 90 degrees and see what your outer round is on it. But that's basically how the average guy like myself would do it. Now, if you're a professional machinist, you're probably not watching this video. If you are, I hope you're getting a good laugh. If you're a hobbyist or want to be like I am, hopefully you're getting something out of these videos. About ten and a half over there. Eight right there. About six on that one. So, yeah, this engine's wore out. So there you have it. That's how you use these two tools in conjunction with each other. Hope you gain something from this if you're going to be building an engine yourself in the future or have one in progress. I got both of these two sets of tools combined for a little over 200 bucks compared to probably 2500 to 3000 to get Starrett or another big name brand machinist tool to do the same thing and these gauges seem very accurate and for what I'm doing with them they're going to last more than my lifetime as long as you take care of them, keep them clean so would I recommend buying these? You betcha. Well, that's going to wrap this video up. Like I said, I hope you gained something from it. I know this is a fun hobby for me. I really enjoy it. It's a good way to spend some extra time. If you have any. It's hard to come by these days. But anyway, it's always great to be able to get out and do this stuff yourself if you can. It's a good experience. Things you'll never forget. Things you can pass on to next generations. And hopefully others can learn from you also. Thanks for watching. I'd like to give a big shout out to Zane at HodgePodge Dodge Garage. He gave me a shout out in his last videos. And traffic on my channel immediately picked up after that. So that tells you it works. And like Zane said in his video, it's not a competition for view count. One guy that will subscribe to your channel actually watch your videos, comment on them, means more to me than 10,000 views on a video. The views really mean nothing. It really does make a difference if you comment and like these videos. So please take the time to do that if you're watching. I'll throw a link to Zane's channel at the end of this video. Check him out if you haven't already. I know a lot of my new subscribers, that's probably where they came from, but if you haven't seen him, go watch him. Also, while I'm on that subject, if you don't watch John Fox over at the Fox Shop, go check him out. John has a lot of good content on old body style Ford trucks. John originally gave a shout out to Zane, and that's how I found his channel. And through Zane, 
I learned about YDOC Productions and Third Coast OBS, which are two more great channels. And they're also new startups like we are. So I encourage you to go check them out. Third Coast OBS is James down there in Texas. And he's got a truck he's working on right now, but he's got a pretty brutal work schedule at the moment, so he's not getting a lot of content out there. But you can check out his past videos and get brought up to current on what he does have going. And Cody at YDOC Productions has a variety of stuff, but he does a lot of old tool restorations or restorations of other small things. He's really good at it. It's really interesting videos to watch. So check him out. I'll link all those guys at the end of this video. And don't forget to subscribe, hit that thumbs up button, hit the notification bell, and leave a comment. It really means a lot to us. Catch you next time. We'll be back on the Alice Chalmers Restoration. See you then. Bye.